very pleasant good morning ladies and gentlemen welcome once again to big stone television as you know the series continues the series of those great musician singers and players of instrument those who are still here with us and those who have gone too soon today i'm going to bring to you a prolific artist an artist that a lot of people has been asking me about Big Stone, please do a story on Earl 16. Well, today your dream has come true. He was born Earl John Daly on the 9th of May 1958 in Kingston, Jamaica. He is a reggae singer whose career began in the mid-1970s. Daly grew up in Walton Park Road, Kingston and influenced by American soul and Jamaican artists such as Dennis Brown, began his singing career by entering local talent shows. He became the lead vocalist for the group, The Flaming Phonics, playing live around Jamaica. Daly decided to drop out of school to pursue his music career, which prompted his mother to throw him out of the family home. Needing to make some money, the group tried out for producer Duke Reed, but left before finishing their recording for him due to his habit of firing live shots in the studio. They then worked with Herman Chinloy, with Daly cutting his first solo track, A Baby. The group split up. With Daly concentrating on his solo career, Daly recorded Malcolm X for producer Joe Gibbs in 1975 a track written by his school friend Winston Mackinoff and which was later successfully covered by Dennis Brown. In 1977, he joined Boris Gardner's group, the Boris Gardner happening, which brought him into contact with Lee Scratch Perry. In the late 1970s, after a spell with Derek Harriet, Daly recorded four tracks at Perry Black Ark Studio, including the original recording of White Belly Rat, also meeting Earl Morgan of the Eptones, who later produced his album Shining Star. In the early 1980s, he recorded singles for a variety of producers, including Linval Thompson, Augustus Pablo, Clement Dodd, Sugar Minot, Yabi U, and Derek Ariad and recording his debut album with Mikey Dredd. He teamed up with Roy Cousins for two albums, Julie and Special Requests. Earlier material recorded for Studio One was released as 1985 Showcase album. In 1985, after spending time in the United States, he relocated to England, fathering a child, his child's mother, new mad professor who daily began working with he also worked with other british producers such as stafford douglas one of his tracks from this era was a cover version of holding back the years which had been a big hit for simply red returning to jamaica he worked briefly with king jammy in the 1990s he made guest appearances on tracks by left field and he has been one of two vocalists for the UK electronic reggae band Dread Zone since 1995. He signed for WEA for his major label debut album. 1997, Stepping Out, which was nominated for a Mobile Award. Earl has continued touring and working with Dread Zone band as well as joining Left Field on tours. Recently, Earl has been working with producers in the UK and Europe, as well as doing shows with Thomas Evers of Rockers Artist Agency, worldwide as a reggae ambassador. He started his own label, Merge Production, releasing previously unreleased vinyl from the 1970s and 1980s. He also released an album on Merge Productions, Walls of the City, Earl 16 meets Nick Manasse in March 2013, featuring both British and international artists and vinyl, digital download 
and CD. Some of the albums to Earl 16 archive include Reggae Sounds 1981, Julie 1982, Super Duper 1982, Special Request 1983, Shining Star 1983, Songs for a Reason 1983, Songs of Love and Hardship 1984, Showcase 1985, Here 2000, Babylon Walls 1991, Bossman 1992, Not For Sale 1993, Phoenix of Peace 1993, Rootsman 1994, Stepping Out 1997, Wondrous Works 2000, Cyber Roots 2001, Soldiers of Ja Army 2003, Much of the Dance, Earth 16 Live with No More Babylon, BMG. Feel the Fire, Wake Up, The Fittest, Walls of the City, and Earl 16 vs. Ken Parker. What an artist, what a voice, what a composition of great, great song. The legendary, the iconic Earl 16, a young man that grew up in the Walton Park Road area of Kingston could easily have been influenced by the gangs and the drugs and all different things that was happening in and around that time during politics. But Earl 16 stayed the course, believe in his talent as a young musician, believing that he can become the superstar that he has become today. Earl 16 is about age 64 now and he's still going strong. His music has formed some of the best grassroots reggae music that ever came out of Jamaica. Earl 16, I just want to thank you, sir, wherever you are, Earl, for giving us great, 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 great reggae music, for giving us a lifetime of music that you're still doing up until this day. We hope for you and we wish for you Long, 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 long life. The legendary, the iconic Earl 16 that is still here with us today. Thank you, Mr. 16. You came, you saw, and you're still conquering. Thank you for a career that we sought after year in and year out. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The legendary the iconic, the still living Earl John Daly, or better known as Earl 16. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then what are you waiting for? Now is the time to do so. Thank you so much for watching.